All right. Let's give God a hand of praise in this place, church. Yeah. Amen. Come on, let's give it, give it up for him. He's worthy of your praise. He's worthy of your praise. Amen. David said, when I consider the works of your hand, how excellent is your name. Not just in Georgia. Not just in Arkansas. Not just in the United States. Facebook each week. We give God the glory and praise and honor for you. We also salute Turning Point Christian Fellowship in Hot Springs, Arkansas. We give the direction Pastor Tanya Burton. We love you guys. Love the work that you're doing there. Also to the rest of the ministries that make up the MBSSN network under the leadership of Apostle Anthony Dion Blackwell. God bless you. Amen. God bless Pastor Williams and Pastor Ken Jones. Amen. Yes. Pastor and Sister Gray. Yes. Amen. Yes. Apostle Jackie. Yes. And all of the other pastors in the network. Yes, Lord. We love you all. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Um, today I want to uh, continue to uh, explore praise. And we're going to talk about the order of praise. The order of praise. I ask you to Turn to Joshua chapter 6 and also to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. The order of praise. Oftentimes, I think we get to that place where we use the word praise often as freely as we use the word love. Okay. Uh -oh. So much so that sometimes we lose the value mm. of what that really is. All right now. We've gotten so free with the word praise, we could just come in and just shout, Give the God, give the Lord a praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People go clap. Like hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And, yeah. and, and that's what they have come to associate praise with. But praise is more than a hand clap. Yes. Yes. Praise is more than shouting at the top of your voice. That's yes. so true. Yes. Praise is even more than a lifestyle. Mm. <laughs> because when you praise, you begin to set things in order. Right, right. In the atmosphere. In the atmosphere. Wow. It's a powerful tool. Amen. So don't ever take lightly the order of praise. Amen. When you are ordered to praise, you're being ordered to put something in motion, put in, motion. Yeah. in the atmosphere. <laughs> put something in motion. Yes, Amen. We're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail, but that's what we're going to begin today. The order of praise. Let's look at Joshua chapter 6. And I'm going to be reading this from the easy to read version. Joshua chapter 6 begins. Begin with verse number one. I'm going to read through the 20th verse, but beginning with verse uh, number one. Amen. Stand in honor of the reading of the word of God. The gates of the city of Jericho were closed, and the people in the city were afraid because the Israelites were near. And no one went into the city, and no one came out. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Look, I will let you defeat the city of Jericho. You will defeat the king and all the fighting men in the city. March around the city with your army once every day for six days. Tell seven of the priests to carry trumpets made from the horns of male sheep and to march in front of the priests who are carrying the holy box. And on the seventh day, march around the city seven times. 
and tell the priest to blow the trumpets while they march. They will make one loud noise from the trumpets, and when you hear that noise, mm. tell all the people to begin shouting. And when you do this, the walls of the city will fall down, and your people will be able to go straight into the city. So Joshua, son of Nun, called the priests together and said to them, Carry the holy box of the Lord. Tell seven priests to carry the trumpets and march in front of it. Then Joshua ordered the people, Now go, march around the city. The soldiers with weapons will march in front of the holy box of the Lord. After Joshua finished speaking to the people, the seven priests with the trumpets began marching before the Lord, blowing the trumpets as they marched. And the priests carrying the Lord's holy box followed them. The soldiers with weapons marched in front of the priests who were blowing the horns. And the rest of the men walked behind the holy box, marching and blowing their trumpets. Joshua had told the people not to give a war cry. He said, don't shout. Don't say a word until the day I tell you. Then you will shout. So Joshua made the priests carry the holy box of the Lord around the city one time. Then they went back to the camp and spent the night there. Early the next morning, Joshua got up and the priests carried the Lord's holy box again. The seven priests with the trumpets marched in front of the Lord's holy box, blowing their trumpets. And the soldiers with weapons marched in front of them and the rest of the people marched behind the Lord's holy box. During the whole time they marched, the priests were blowing the trumpets. On the second day, they all marched around the city one time, and then they went back to the camp. They continued to do this every day for six days. Verse 15, on the seventh day, there it is. they got up at dawn and marched around the city seven times. They marched in the same way they had marched on the days before, but on that day, they marched around the city seven times. The seventh time they marched around the city, the priests blew their trumpets. Then Joshua gave the command, gave the order. Now shout. The Lord is giving you this city. Mm. The city and everything is to be destroyed as an offering to the Lord. Mm. Now notice, and I just want to interject, even at this point, even before the city is given, mm. the order of praise was established. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, yes it was. Come on, somebody. Yes, it the was. order of praise is established. It's order, praise. Uh -huh. Praise him, even though the city is still shut up. Praise him. Praise. Yeah. Even though you don't have one ounce of gold praise yet, it. praise him. Yes, yes. Come on, somebody. Even though you've not swung a single punch yet, praise him. Even though you've not planted your flag in victory, praise yeah, him. Yeah, Lord. Yes, hey, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jesus. yeah. Verse 17. The city and everything is to be destroyed as an offering to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and everyone in her house will be left alive. These people must not be killed because she helped two spies. Yes, she did. Verse 18, remember, we must destroy everything else. Don't take anything. If you take anything and bring it into our camp, you yourselves will be destroyed and you will cause trouble for the rest of of our people. See, when you don't follow instructions, you bring calamity on the camp. Come on, somebody. When you don't follow the order, you bring calamity on the rest of the camp. That's why we cannot afford to walk outside of being on one accord. If we're going to praise one, we all going to praise. We're not going to be depressed. And we're not going to have 98% of us praising God and 2% of you being depressed. 
We're going to all praise God regardless of your state of mind. Regardless of what you're going through. Regardless of what you're facing. Why? Because there is an order of praise and there is a breakthrough on the other side of the order of praise. And if you just trust God for the battle plan. Yes. Come on somebody. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Wow. Verse 19, all things, all the things made from silver, gold, bronze, and iron belong to the Lord. They must be put in the Lord's treasury. Yes. Mm. All the things made from silver, gold, bronze, and iron belong to the Lord. The resources. Did we not just talk about that earlier? Yes. The resources. And they must be put where? In the Lord's treasury. treasury. This is going to determine the type of the breakthrough the people get. That if they can trust God enough and not be selfish mm -hmm. and put these resources in the Lord's treasury, they will be victorious. Amen. I don't know where you are in your life right now and what battle you're fighting, but God is saying, I've given you resources to secure a victory in yes. your battle. Amen. Are you unselfish Amen. enough Amen. that you yeah. will put your resources in the Lord's treasury Amen. and trust God for the break? Come on. Well, Amen. Well, Amen. Come on. Well, Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. So then, the priests blew the trumpets. And when the people heard the trumpets, they began shouting. And the walls fell down. And the people ran up into the city. So the Israelites defeated that city. That's it. Amen. 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 One more scripture that I want to share with you, and I'm going to let you take your seat. We're going to just begin to open this up. Now let's look at 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21. Now this is a this is a different battle, but it's the principle mm -hmm. that I want to reveal. And in the background, Joshua, I'm not Joshua, I'm sorry, Jehazadak, Jehazadak mm -hmm. is leading the people. That's right. That's right. The word has been that a great army is going to come against them. And Jehoshaphat set himself out to fast in order that God would speak to him and give him a revelation. And so God spoke to Jehoshaphat concerning the battle, concerning the war plan. That's right. Gave him some specific instructions. And one of those instructions, 2 Chronicles 20, 21, he consulted with the people and appointed some to sing for the Lord. And some to face the splendor of his holiness. And when they went out in front of the armed forces, they kept singing. Give thanks to the Lord for his faithful love endures forever. 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 May God bless the reading Amen. and the hearing of his word. You can be seated. Amen. Amen. And I just want to take a couple of moments to just put some principles out here for you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Talking about uh, the order of praise. And both of these accounts, praise is order in advance of the battle. Praise is required in advance of the victory. One of the things that we've got to understand is that praise is a powerful weapon yes. Powerful. Yes, it in is. my arsenal yes. Yes, it is. as a believer. Yes, it is. I'm not just praising God because of something that I want. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. That's it. That's it. I'm not just praising God because I feel good. That's uh -oh. right. <laughs> and I'm really not just praising God because somebody grabbed a, a microphone and said, give God a praise. No. All right. <laughs> but I'm praising God because I understand that praise is a powerful weapon in my arsenal. Men and women of God, we are always at war. Yes, we are. All the time. Yes, we are. We are always at war. Mm -hmm. 
even when we find ourselves in what seems like a season of peace, we always are at war. That's why it's even recorded in uh, the, the, the uh, which book is that? Uh, Philippians, I believe it was. That's, I'm sorry, Thessalonians. It's recorded in Thessalonians. That even when they cry peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them. We always at war. But God has given you a weapon. That if you learn the dynamic of the praise my weapon, God, my God, my God. you will never be defeated. Wow. You will never be defeated. Amen. So there are some things that we need to understand about praise mm -hmm. in order to better position ourselves in our life. And especially where the promises of God are concerned. The main reason why a lot of us aren't where we ought to be and we don't have what we ought to have because we have misused Come on down. Uh -oh. the weapon of praise. We Come didn't understand there. it. Didn't understand it. And really, when you think about it, you go into most of our churches and we've pretty much been taught that praise is a feel-good expression. <laughs> wow. Wow. And that's, that's what we've done. We've re we reduced the value of praise to a feel good expression. Come on, y'all, give God a praise. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah, brother. Oh, he's so good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yep, <laughs> And then they stop. That's it. It's about what a 15, 20 second feel good thing, and now we're waiting on the next instruction. Amen. But there's so much more yeah. to praise. Yes, so that we understand praise has been given to me as an order. And when I receive praise as an order, I understand the things I can do right. by the power of praise. That's right. That's right. Amen. Are y'all with Amen. me? Yeah, that's right. Now there are Five pointers that I want to share with us today when we're talking about uh, this praise order. And I, I just really want to just kind of put them out there. I want to just teach this to you. I want to make sure we get this thing. But one of the things that I want us to make sure that uh, we understand is that in order for us to really understand praise and to become effectual in praise, we have to begin to surround ourselves with people who are praising God. Amen. 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 Yeah. We got we to surround ourselves yeah. with praising people mm -hmm. in order to become a praising person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. I cannot effectively praise God if I'm not spending time around people who praise God as a normal part right. of their That's spiritual right. walk. That's right. Come That's, on right. Man. That's right. If you think about it, everything we do is learned behavior. Yep. That's right. Come on, everything man. we do. Come on now. Matter of fact, just to share an example or two, People who are afraid of dogs, they're afraid of dogs, most of them because they were taught to be afraid of dogs. Somewhere, somebody told them, dog is a bad animal. He will bite you. And so now when they see a dog, it doesn't matter what it is, it could be a little poodle, it could be a little chihuahua, they're frightened. Because again, it's a learned behavior. Amen? You take children. Children uh, enjoy candy because it's a learned behavior. This is sweet. It's delicious. I guarantee you, if you start giving a baby a piece of celery and a carrot, oh when that baby's old enough to eat it, you give it to that baby enough, that baby's going to grow up and develop an affection for celery and carrots. Right. They'll right. be crazy that's about right. it. That's true. But if you give them junk every time, you're teaching them that a junk is good, and that's what they're going to want. It's learned behavior. Learned behavior. Amen. Right. Yeah. Even even when we think about some of the bad habits that we have, again, it's learned behavior. That's some of right. us some of us cuss like sailors, and it wasn't that you just decided you was going to wake up one morning and cuss. 
you've been spending time around cussing people. And when you spend time around cussing people, you become a cussing person. Every other word is a cuss word. Why? Because that's what you hear. You know, I remember, I remember even when I was, uh, even when I was about uh, 12 years old, first time I ever smoked a cigarette. Uh-oh. I did it because my friends were doing it. Yeah, uh-oh. It wasn't that I just woke up one morning and decided, hmm, I think I'm going to start smoking. I did it because my friends were doing it. Right. Amen. It was learned behavior. Uh-oh. And before you know it, I, I was smoking on the record. Amen. And anything, anything that you do, anything that you do long enough, you learn how to do it well. Right. Come on, somebody, you learn how to do it well, right? Yeah. So I remember we'd be walking home from school. I think we were like in the seventh grade. Walking home and one day, one day my friend, you know, smoking a cigarette, so, you want one? Yeah. Okay, so here I am, I got my little cigarette, I didn't know what I was doing, you know, I'm watching them, so you know, I'm... <coughs> Before you know it, you get good and you learn how to like it. <laughs> That's pretty good. You know, you know how to do the walk with it. You, know, you learn how to walk, you know, walk down the street, have it cupped in that hand like that. Oh, because it's learned behavior. I'm watching them. <laughs> right? Then before you know it, you really get good at it. Then you learn how to talk with the cigarette in your mouth. Okay? You can do whatever you need to do. That's how some of us got good at what we're doing, right? We don't have to hold it in every now. We did every now. Look at that. Get that, get that finger flick like that. <laughs> What's that going to be doing this here? So, so again, it's learned behavior. And, and, and when I look back, 
when I when I was smoking, I don't smoke now no more. Praise God, I quit. Amen. Amen. But it was a practice I picked up because somebody else was doing it. I was around people who were doing it. And not only was I around friends that did it, but my mama smoked, my daddy smoked, and I had family members that smoked, so then it was something I did. Likewise, when you begin to spend time around people who praise God, but also God. You spend enough time around people that praise God. You're going to be praising God just like them. Amen. And especially those, it doesn't matter how cold it is. It doesn't matter how bad things are. They still give God a praise. It doesn't matter what they're going through. They still give God a praise. Get to the point they do it automatically without even thinking about it. They still praise God. So you got to begin to check your circle because if I'm not at a place that I'm not praising God like that, it might be because I'm not spending time around people who are full of praise. Some of us do more complaining than we do praising because we spend too much time around people who complain. Wow. Because David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise is going to continue to be in my mouth. I, I don't have room to complain. Why? Because I'm going to bless him at all times. I don't have I don't have room to be anxious. Why? Because I'm going to bless him at all times. So if that's not you, if you learn how to complain, if you learn how to be stressed, if you learn how to be anxious, it's because of the type of people you've been spending your time around. Amen. And no wonder you can't praise God. No wonder you can't get a breakthrough because the people you're spending your time around have never gotten a breakthrough. And they've never been able to praise God like that. So in order to get to that point, some of us need to divorce some of the people in our circle yeah, right. and yoke ourselves up with people who have yeah. determined that it is much better That's to praise right. than it is to complain. Yeah. There you go. There you go. There you go. Come on, this is simple preaching. Notice the first thing that God did in both of these situations, both in Joshua's situation and in Jehoshaphat's situation, he surrounded them with people who were praising God. People who knew how to praise God. People who didn't have to be pumped and primed to praise God. Even with Jehoshaphat, he told him, he said, you go and you find some people that will praise me and you put them up in the front. Praise always precedes the battle. Praise always comes before the victory. That's why we got to be careful, always jumping up and asking people to pray for us. Y'all pray for me. No, I'm not going to do that. You, you don't even praise God. Well, I'm going to ask you to pray for me. You won't even praise God. You don't even pray for yourself. But you find, you need to find people whose life is full of praise. And guess what? These are not perfect people. They got issues just like you. They got problems just like you. They're going through just like you. They have battles just like you. They fight demons just like you. But they choose to praise. They choose to praise. You don't have to figure out, you don't have to figure out what kind of mindset they're going to be in. They're the same every day. Amen. They praise God. They praise God. They're not anxious. They're not stressed. They praise God because they understand one of the fundamental rules of praise is that no matter what you're going through, all things work to your good. Oh, so why am I worried about what's going to happen in the middle? If this thing is going to work out in my good, some kind of way, something good is going to come out of this. So God, I praise you for my good. I praise you for the good that's going to come out of this. And I praise you for what I got to go through to get there. Yes, We've got to surround ourselves. Notice again, as I've said before, so God's first order was I need to put people in the camp who understand the dynamic of praise. Check your camp. Check your camp. Check your camp. Are there people in my camp that praise? Or do they complain? Do they praise or do they whine? Do they praise or do they get stressed? Well, 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 my God. Check your camp. My God. You cannot inherit the good of God 
If you got the wrong people wow. in your camp. Some of us need to do a camp check. Camp check. Camp check. Mm. So under no, number one, we got to surround ourselves with people of praise. Amen. Number two, take serious the order of praise. It is given as a warfare weapon. Take it seriously. Every time you open your mouth and you begin to praise, you're releasing things into the atmosphere and you're setting things in motion. That's why the Bible says, I've given you the key of the kingdom of heaven. And watch this, here it comes. That whatever you loose, but hang on a second. Loose, whatever you loose. And how are we going to loose? Through our mouths and through our actions. That whatever we loose, in other words, to loose something then is to release. Yes, yes. That whatever we release in heaven is going to be manifested yep. yeah. on earth. Yeah. That whatever you speak into the atmosphere, yeah. that, is going to be that is what's going to be manifested. Yes. Whatever you yeah. bind, whatever, whatever you put your mouth against. And again, it's all about praise. So praise is not always the shouting, the clapping. It's a specific order that comes out of your mouth. And if I even say, Lord, I, right now in the name of Jesus, I command that a healing virtue overtake my body. That is a praise. Yes, 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 yes. I haven't shouted. I haven't yes. clapped. But I released into the atmosphere an order of praise. And the order of praise is that a virtue would take over my health in the form of him. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Put that in the atmosphere. That's why the Bible says out of your mouth comes praise and out of your mouth comes cursing. And the, these two ought not be. Come on now. Because one will cancel out the other. Yes, you will. Oh, Lord. Tell the truth. You cannot sustain praise with a filthy mouth. When you, when, you, when you start that up and you start all of that, that foul language, you're reversing the effect of your praise. Even when you begin to speak against God's will for your life, I ain't never going to be able to. I'm broke. I ain't got nothing. That's just going to be too hard for me to do. You're loosing that into the atmosphere. You're loosing into the atmosphere. And that's again, you know, why the Bible says we have the power. Somebody say power. We have the power of death and life. In our mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have that. We have it. Some of us are holding our own blessings up because of things that you've spoken out of your mouth that were not praiseworthy. So you have to understand if I'm a vessel of praise and if I have been created to praise God, then everything that comes out of my mouth and everything that comes out of my living is some form of praise. Well, well, yeah. I'm either going to have a constructive praise that comes out of my mouth, right. or I'm going to have a reckless praise that comes out of my mouth. Right, right, right. So you've got to be very careful with what you say. Yeah. Amen. With how you label yourself. Label it. When we praise God, we learn, watch this, we learn how to see not what man sees, but we learn how to see what God sees. Well, well. Amen. So that when we open our mouth and speak, we're speaking of things that have not yet been manifested not before yet, us, but that by faith Come we trust now. God for. Come on now. All right. 
Oh, I'm, right. I'm trying my best to get this thing out. By faith, we trust God for it. If yeah. God show it to you, you speak it out Come on, now. into the atmosphere. Oh, kind of goes back to what uh, Pastor Orville said this morning when he told uh, the story about uh, the pastor who purchased the drums and people in the church began to complain because the drums were too noisy and it was said, well, the, the, the drums and noise is not for you, it's for God. Amen. All right? So the same thing is true. When you begin to speak of things, it is not for others to approve or deny. You're speaking of things that God showed you, that God revealed to you. That's why we praise him. Word did say, I'll show you things that others would long to see. And I'll tell you things that others would long to hear. So why are we worried about what somebody else is going to say? You praise God for what God showed you. That's right. That's it. Hallelujah. Businesses that have never gotten off the ground because somebody told you what you couldn't do and you believed it. Dreams that never got fulfilled because you went by what you saw before you and you refused to see what God was trying to show you. You got to begin to praise God for the breakthrough even before that time comes. That's right. That's right. Notice how even on the seventh day they begin to praise God and the walls weren't even down yet, but they begin to praise God because guess what? Praise is a sign also of, of what you expect. It's a sign of what you expect. I expect that the walls are going to come down and I don't have to wait for the walls to come down before I pray. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to begin to praise God even now because I know that my praise is effectual. I'm going to praise God right now. I don't have to wait for God to move first. I don't have to wait for something to happen. I don't have to wait for evidence. I don't have to wait for a sign. I've already seen it in the now, in the supernatural. And if I praise God for it now, He'll manifest it in the natural. Yes, he will. That's why even in the Word, the Word said, "Let the weak." Say I'm strong. That's a praise order. That's right. Let the sick say I'm healed. That's a praise order. We praise God before the manifestation of the thing that we praise God for. So the praise becomes the key that unlocks the blessing. All right. All right. Doesn't matter what's locked up behind the wall. It look, they, 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 they put it, they, everything that they needed. Was behind the wall. Come on now. The enemy took the goods hostage. Nobody went in, and nobody came out. It's almost like the enemy saying, "I got your stuff. I'm coming to get it, and you can't have it." Even for some of us right now, there are some things that the enemy have taken from you. Oh God. And locked behind the wall. My God. And in doing so, have silenced your praise. My God, my God, my God. That's what the enemy, for most of us, that's all it takes is for you to lose something behind the wall. And you won't <laughs> praise God. Oh, wow. How many times? Yeah. And he knew it. How many times have you been on to something and all of a sudden the very thing you was pursuing some kind of way slipped behind the wall uh -oh. and out of your view on, and you dropped your head in the process. Yep. God said, but I'm fixing to show you how you can stand on the other side of that wall and keep your chin up. Yes. When I tell you to open your mouth and you praise it, you better believe I'm going to be a battle ram. And I'm going to knock that wall down. I don't care what it is. I don't care how long it's been behind the wall. I don't care what type of change it got locked in the door. If you believe and you open up your mouth and you begin to praise God, whatever the devil got, he got to lose. Somebody shout, whatever. Whatever. Woo. Whatever you got, you got to let go. You got to let go of my son. You got to let go of my daughter. You got to let go of my finances. You got to let go of my spouse. You got to let go of my household. You got to take your grip 
cost of my career. You got to let it go. See, they stood before that wall. And they saw the wall brought down before one brick fell. Somebody gonna get that thing in a moment. They saw the wall down before one brick fell. That's why even that woman, the Bible spoke about her over in Mark chapter 5, uh, the, the woman that had the issue of blood, and she actually began to praise Jesus in the press coming up behind him. But she got excited about what she had already seen worked out in the supernatural. She said, when I get there and touch his garment, I know I'm going to be made whole. The doctor didn't tell her that, but praise revealed it. Come on, somebody. Her friends didn't tell her that, but praise revealed it. Whatever I got to do, all I got to do is just touch the hem of his garment. And then this old nasty condition I got has got to lose his grip on me. That's what praise will do to you. Praise will get you excited about that stuff that haven't even happened yet. It'll get you excited about that stuff that haven't even been manifested yet. It'll get you excited about that stuff that's still behind the wall. It'll get you excited about the rain that haven't come down from heaven yet. It'll get you excited about a season that you haven't even walked into yet. It'll get you excited about a prophetic word that haven't even been spoken yet. It'll get you excited about now what God is going to do that he haven't even done yet. I dare somebody to praise God for the breakthrough. Praise God for the victory. Praise God for the wall coming down. Praise God for the rain coming out. Praise God for the season that's about to find you. Whoa, praise God, church. We hear things that other people can't hear. That's why we praise God the way we do. Because we already know that in due season, God is going to show up and show out. this. I just want to share one or two more. Now here's the thing that you got to understand. Oh, glory. Praise Ooh. is patient. Oh, yes. Yes. Praise is patient. You cannot rush the outcome of praise. Come on, say it again. Come on, You cannot rush the outcome of praise because praise is a process that produces results. Does somebody hear me? Praise is a process that produces results. My process ain't gonna work out like your process. Neither should you expect your process to work out like mine. The only thing you need to expect is this is gonna be a process. Because now look at this. They, they, yeah. look, look at look at what, what, what God revealed to Joshua. He said, now what you got to do, he said, for six days. Six days. Oh, come on, I know you got to. Y'all got to walk over there by the city. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Blow the trumpet one time, then come on back. <laughs> Wall ain't gonna come down that on, on, the, on the first day, so don't expect it to. Right. Now that would have messed up. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that would have messed up. That would have messed up some of us. Yeah. Come on there. Because what we want to do, we want to come inside the church and we want to praise God and go outside and everything is worked out. Some of you are praising God today for something that's going to happen in 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, that's good stuff right there, huh? Good stuff right there. Some of you are praising God today for something that's going to happen in 2025. But see, your process, your process got to take you from here to there. That's right. That's right. My God. 
to hear God saying, oh yeah, I'm going to bring the wall down, but what I want you to do for the next six days, I want you to go over and you walk by the wall, okay? Yeah, yeah. And matter of fact, y'all go out there and we're going to line up just like this, and we're going to line up like that, but I want you walking behind them that's going to praise God, all right? I want you walking behind them that's going to sound the trumpet. See, sometimes we try to do stuff without praising God first, but you understand the order of things, the order is a praise must proceed my process. You gotta praise him even before you get there. Before yeah. oh, you get yeah. there. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Even, even, and, and I know I'm not the only one that can speak of this, you know, even with the blessing that we just walked into. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. God yeah. blessed us with a new yeah. house. And, yeah. You know, even before, yeah. even before it was revealed, yeah. Yeah. I still stayed excited about it. I said, Lord, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, praise yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I know it's there. It's oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. And, and I've already kind of seen it. Yeah, I've seen yeah, it. Yeah. I, I, even yeah. though I don't know exactly where, but Lord, I have seen yeah. it. Yeah. God will put that thing in your spirit. Come on, yeah. And God will say, and when I give you the command to blow the trumpet. Uh -huh. Glory, 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 when I give you the command. And watch how this thing worked out because, you know, God will let you hear that. He He'll let you hear that trumpet. And probably about three weeks before God revealed that God spoke to me, he said, now call, call your landlords and tell them you're moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hadn't told them nothing up until that point. I said, now you call them and tell them you're getting ready to move. Now the house has not yet been revealed. But that was sign enough that God, the process is moving right along. And I trust you enough that I'm going to pick up the phone and send an email and say, okay, I'm submitting to you my notice to quit the lease because I'm getting ready to move from here to a higher place. And I'm praising God for all alone. I didn't even know where the place was, but I started praising God because the process was working. after I sent them that email. Come on now. They emailed me back and they said, well, they said, uh, what day, what day are you going to be submitting your official notice to quit? I said, well, I'm going to let you know that. I said, I don't know the date right now. I said, but you just need to know we fix to go. So it's going to happen real soon. Again, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Look, look, if I didn't have faith, I'd have been concerned I'd wind up homeless. But I'm telling these people I'm fixing to move out of God have not yet revealed where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> but guess what? When, when you when you learn how to walk by faith again, right. you, you, you see God at the finish line, right? Yeah. And the thing is, he's pulling you on to where he is. Yeah. Yeah. He said, but there's still some things you need to walk through. Yeah. And there's still some things you got to go through. Yeah. Okay? But then, all of a sudden, one day, God told me, he said, now, he said, what you do? He said, email them back. Tell them today is the official day that you're submitting that 30-day notice wow. to quit. The house had not even yet been revealed. Wow. But God said, you tell them, today starts the 30 days. But God, I trust you. Why? Because I've been believing you for this thing. And I'm going to still praise you. Then it's done. Then we started telling, we started telling uh, Pastor Jackie, y'all start bringing the boxes in. Start bringing the boxes in. We're going to be out of here. And when God find you faithful over the praise. Now watch this because I told you praise is even more than just what you say, but it's even in your action. It's even, it's even in your action. I still got to walk this thing out. And I still got, Lord, I still got to give like I've been given. I still got to believe you. Every time I came up here and sold my seat, I said, Lord, I thank you for the house. I thank you for the house. I thank you for the thing. I thank you that there's already somebody that's going to approve this thing, this transaction. Come on, somebody. So here's what he told them. He said, six days. Y'all walk around there. Blow the trumpet. Then come on back. Now it's very important that they follow the instruction the way he told them to do it. See, some of us don't follow the instruction. That's why we can't get no breakthrough. 
We tell you praise God even when you don't feel like it. As soon as you get home, you got your little folk out, you depressed, you don't want to praise. When you don't follow the instructions, you wonder why the wall don't come down. And you don't get your stuff. But you got to get to the point where if the man of God said, I need to open up my mouth and praise God, I am not going to let no devil in hell tell me not to praise God. I am not going to be feeling sorry for myself. I am not going to go home and sit in a dark corner and be depressed. I will praise God. I have to do it by my own foolish self. I will praise God in the dark. I will praise God in the rain. I will praise God without a dime in my pocket. I will praise God because I trust God. I will praise God because I believe the report of God. I will praise God because I stand on the word of God. I will praise God because God has never failed. I will praise God because if God did it for you and if God did it for you, he got to do it for me. Ow! I praise you, God. Look at this. He told him. He said, now, don't y'all take don't take nothing. Matter of fact, don't even say a word. Just yeah. praise. Yeah. See, you can't tell everybody what you're praising no, God for. Right. No, no, are we praising Him because we're going to go around there and we're going to shout and we're going we're gonna to make them. No, 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 no. no, no. Yes, 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 God, God said, we're just going to make them look like a little parade. That's what we're going to make them look like. You know why? Because there's still some people in the camp yeah. or around the camp uh-huh. who not where you at. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So you don't tell them everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. You just wrap it up in a praise. Amen. Why are you always happy? Yes. Well, I'm all right. It ain't nothing. <laughs> y'all get y'all get ready to go somewhere. Oh, we all right. We all right. <laughs> must be going on with them because they mighty happy. You don't say nothing to nobody. So it's important that we be patient and that we follow the instruction. God has given some of us instruction, but you, if, you, if you're not staying focused, you're going to miss the instruction. Because praise includes a high level of focus. You're praising because you're focused on the instruction that he gave you. That's all right. Yep. And then on that seventh day, look, it took them seven days. Seven, seven days. Seven, 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 seven days. But again, there's the Bible said there's a season and a time for everything. That's right. So you may not necessarily be praising God for anything that's going to happen today. Come on now. But oh, don't God. let that dilute your praise. That's right. Because here's what some of you think. I'm so sick and tired of hearing her talk about her house. I'm so sick and tired of it. He said one more thing about that raggedy car. I'm going to have a fit. You just locked up yours. You ain't locked up. Look, you praise him anyway. Yes. Because everybody's process is uniquely tailored to their relationship with God and what God is doing for them. This was a seven day process. Whereas now with Jehoshaphat, God told them, y'all gonna get up first thing in the morning. That's right. <laughs> Woo-hoo! Right. Come on, y'all gonna get up first thing in the morning and go take your position on that hill. That's right. But for Joshua, then he says, seven days I need you guys. Days. But how come we can't go down and get up in the morning and go up the hill like the rest of them? Because <laughs> 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 you got a process. Some of us looking to change careers or we're looking to change addresses. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yes. And guess what? God is willing. Yes. 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 Gotta be patient. But you got to maximize what you already got yes. 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 before God trusts you with more. Some of us aren't even maximizing what that which we have. So true. So true. So through praise and obedience, you're going to get there. That's right, man. Uh-huh. That's right. Yeah, we want it yesterday, don't we? Yeah. Always. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get no, frustrated when it don't look like it's happening. No, Come on now. I like that. But no, it's coming. That's right. Be and the sooner you begin to do what God tell you to do. to do. That's why the word said, I find you faithful. 
over a few things, I will make you ruler over many. In other words, if we boil that down, God is saying, just do the work in the space I gave you, and then I'll expand your territory accordingly. Put something I'm not gonna put something in your jurisdiction that you can't handle. That's right. So so true. God don't have an interest in having his goods repossessed by the enemy. No, 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 no. I said if I give it to you, it's yours. It's yours. Amen. Oh, here they go. Six days, and they did exactly what God told them. And even in the process of your praise, don't you get so praise happy that you forget you still owe God resources. Yes, yes. Yes. Some of us, boy, we'll come and we'll dance right, we'll dance and shout right on past that tray, won't we? <laughs> dance and shout right past it. Wow. Because we're praising God also in our giving. And, and, and look, I want to say this. Your giving is a reflection of what you're praising God for. Mm -hmm. Don't ever forget that. Mm -hmm. And this is why we'll begin to bring this thing to a close. Your giving is a reflection of what you're praising and believing God for. And when you see in the supernatural that God is calling you to go higher and that God is expanding your territory when you see in the supernatural that God is calling for a full-blown increase in every yeah. area of your yeah. life, where the time has come to step up to the plate, yeah. to be more, yeah. to have more, yeah. to do more, yeah. you understand that of whom much is given, much is required. Much is required. Yes. So you can't go higher and continue to give God less. No. My God, my God. If you want to go higher, you give God more. God will trust you with more and take you higher. And then when he takes you higher, you serve him with a higher level of praise. And not just out of your mouth, but out of your living. God, I honor you with praise through my living. It's all inclusive. Seventh day, God saw that they were ready. And He gave the command. And He said, Shout. Standing before the wall. The wall is still up, but God said, Shout. Shout. That's going to bring me to my final point I want to share with you. You've got to believe in the power of your praise. You've got to believe that if God says, Shout. That the healing be done, yes. you shout. Right. And you believe that the healing is going to happen. If God tells you to shout, yes. and that by shouting, you're going to unlock the gateway to that yes. brand new yes. job, yes. you open your mouth and shout, yes. even though you may have a broom in your hand. Yes. That's right. Yes. you from everything but you shout right. 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 y'all remember even when Paul and Silas sat in that old coaching the Bible said they began to pray and they started singing praises said that other people heard them because guess what now people need to hear what you put on the atmosphere now is the time to shout it now is the time to praise it now is the time to let it bevel up out of your belly now is the time for it to come up out of your mouth now is the time for you to set it in order in the atmosphere call it out call it out you're about to lose my finances. I praise you, God. 